Well, welcome to this very exciting day for the University of Pikeville. Um, something I'm very excited about. Um, I'm glad to see a lot of the students in attendance. I think this will be something very beneficial for you guys as well. Um, I'm not the reason you guys are here. I mean, I want to let, turn it over to our president, Dr. James Hurley. I too, I too want to welcome you and thank you for joining us for this uh, unique partnership between the University of Pikeville and West Care, Kentucky. I would also like to extend a special UPike welcome to members of the West Care team led by Richard Steinberg, President and CEO of the West Care Foundation. He will be speaking along with Bob Neary, Senior Vice President and Chief Clinical Officer today. Thank you for joining us and I know Dick has a his team here that he will uh, announce as well. Ambria Ray, Director of Student Services here, uh, Student Success at the University of Pikeville, she will be speaking as well. The University of Pikeville is known for quality academic programs, dedicated faculty and, and, a, and staff, and for providing close personal attention that makes the UPIC experience special. Helping students achieve their educational goals really is at the heart of everything we do. We now have three colleges under the university banner, a diverse student body from over 40 states, 15 countries, and yet again, for the fourth consecutive year, another record enrollment. Beyond the classroom, we offer support that students need to be successful. That includes tutoring, mentoring, healthcare, and other resources and professional services. And as we go, grow, our challenges grow, but so does our commitment. Last May, Dr. Hannah Freeman, Freeman of the faculty sent me a scathing but yet diplomatic email reminding me of the importance of the need for the human health counseling component to the university. And of course, during May, that was the budget process. And it was a very compelling letter because it reminded me of the importance of meeting all of the needs of our students. And so that's why we are here today, to announce this important partnership with WestCare. Their mission of uplifting the human spirit goes hand in hand with our mission of meeting the educational needs of Central Appalachia. WestCare is a national nonprofit organization that provides a wide spectrum of health and human services. Their counselors will now become our counselors. I am pleased to announce the Campus Involvement Center, which will be housed within the Office of Student Success. I would personally, and on behalf of the university, welcome, like to welcome the fam them to our family and to thank everyone who has worked so hard to bring this partnership to fruition. Please join me in welcoming Dick Steinberg, CEO, who will talk more about this unique program. Thank you, Dr. Hurley. Um, where to begin with this? First of all, uh, we came into uh, Pikeville about almost eight years ago now. And uh, I was uh, sort of drafted, if I would, by uh, Bill Baird and uh, Judge Kelsey Friend to look at some issues that were happening in the uh, eastern part of Appalachia. And when I came into the area, uh, one of the things that we've always seen is that people want to do something about problems, but they always say take it two counties away or three states over. And I've never experienced anything like I have in, in Pikeville when I came here. People rolled up their sleeves, got behind us, and really did some great stuff. Um, Bill stepped up, said he'd be our board chair for the first year to get it off the ground. Seven years later, he's still our board chair. We're not, not letting him get away. Um, but we really have, have looked at a lot of different issues in this community. Uh, when we had an opportunity to come meet with Dr. Hurley and Gary Justice uh, a few months back on all of this, uh, I was really taken back by the fact that an incoming president of a university would say, we really want to take a look at issues and not put our head in the sand, but be very proactive. And that doesn't happen too often in our, in our situations across the country. We, unfortunately, when we see issues happen in communities and in colleges and universities especially, Nothing happens until after there's a problem of something magnitude that's happened. Uh, deaths, uh, suicide issues, lots of other stuff that's happened. And Dr. Hurley really would talk about what kind of a partnership could we have and be very proactive in putting a program together. 
And we're, we're really excited about doing this. We've had nothing but wonderful stuff with all of the faculty. The, I, I was tickled because uh, we, we talked about what, what do we do to get started. And, and we said, well, maybe if we can meet with the, the, the chairs of the, of the departments. And, and Dr. Hurley and Gary said, okay, we'll do that. And I'm thinking, okay, two or three of you would show up. Well, all of you came, not for an hour, but we spent a day going over issues. And that really said a lot to me about where the faculty was at uh, about dealing with issues and the fact that you put the students first and your own issues second. And I, I think that's just a phenomenal piece. So we're really excited about the, uh, the partnership. Uh, we think that's the only way it really works in this world anyway is to people to kind of put boundaries down and work together and see what collectively we can do to help a lot of folks. And we, we don't see any issue at, at this university being any different than any other university. There's not a big issue here that's not at other campuses, but the difference is, is, is the proactiveness of, of the leadership and the faculty saying we want to do something. And uh, we really think that's we're off to a great start. I want to also take a moment just to address some of the folks that I have here from Westcare uh, who have flown in. Bob Neary, who you'll hear from in a minute. I've uh, known, I call him Uncle Bob because my kids call him Uncle Bob. He's younger than I am, but I'd love to get away with calling him Uncle Bob. But Bob Neary is our chief clinical officer uh, throughout all the uh, areas. We're in the 16 states and in the U.S. Virgin Islands and then also in uh, the Pacific Islands. And uh, Maurice Lee is uh, our chief operating officer and uh, uh, flew in today from California to be with us as well. Uh, Jeff Cottle, who's sitting here, uh, is our senior vice president for uh, West Care in the Appalachia region. So that includes obviously Kentucky and his home office will be right here. Uh, uh, Teresa Conley is here and she'll be uh, actually one of the principal folks working in the office here and, and providing the systems. And I don't want to not mention the next person that's very important uh, is Sharon Steinberg, who's my wife, who's also an alum of this university. Uh, and uh, a little side piece on that, I, when I first came to Kentucky, I'd been here about 20 minutes and I was in a meeting over in, in uh, Lexington. And, People were talking to each other saying, you know, who's your daddy and who's this? And I said, is there something about this? And the lady got really indignant with me, put her finger in my chest and said, you need to be careful. We have a saying in Kentucky, if you're not related, you were, someday you might be. So my wife is from Kentucky and we've been married three years now. So it's, I should have listened to that lady a little bit closer maybe, but it was great. It's been great. Um, I, I also want to just mention that we have other folks in the audience too, Rodney Scott, who's our jailer here in, in Pike County. We have had a unique relationship uh, at the jail. Uh, and I always joke about it. I like to go see Rodney and I like to fact like get out of jail an hour later, so it's really good. Um, but we have been doing a treatment program at the jail for a number of years now. And it's been very successful. And uh, so I just really, my hat's off to all the things that you guys have done to uh, open the doors for us there as well. The other piece that I think that comes out of this that we're really excited about, we've already had a good relationship with the university for a number of years um, in the fact that a number of you are doing internships uh, with us. And we really want to look at how to expand on that as well. Uh, we think that's a great piece for students to go in through classes and being able to work with us and see what it's really all about in the healthcare industry, especially from the behavioral health side as opposed to just the, the medical side only. So. With that, I'd like to introduce Bob Neary, and uh, after we're done here, we'll be open for lots of questions, but we just uh, get through the first part here. Uncle Bob. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, it really is a great honor to be here today. I came with Dick about eight years ago when we first started, and we've had an exciting uh, expansion of programs in, in Pikeville and, and surrounding communities. And I guess, you know, for the couple of minutes that I was going to be here, the Chief Clinical Officer's title really means that the, it's really a quality title. It means that wherever Westcare has programs, there are programs of quality. And one of the things that we've really learned is that Westcare is, is big on building community within our programs and building community in the communities that we're in. And so we do a lot of work with uh, other colleges. We do work, we, we help write curriculum, we've, we take interns, we do supervision, we've done a lot of partnership things with other colleges and universities, but we've never done anything as unique as this. This is really a very cutting edge uh, opportunity that I think will be looked back on in a year or two and, and it will be a model that a number of universities will take a look at and say, let's, let's, let's emulate what they're doing at the University of Pikeville. Because I really believe that 
that uh, you know we all know in our hearts that that you know students during time students like everybody during times of transition are, those are also times of risk and so when folks are new in a new environment and, and have new decisions they need to make sometimes they drift a little bit and when they do it's going to be great that we're going to be able to work with Amber and her staff and provide some support and counseling to folks that, that come forward and say that they need a little bit of help so we're going to do that but I want to, I want to tell you a, a story real quick about a student. One of, the th one of the things I thought about, when I, was thinking about when I was thinking about talking was, you know, one of the great things about the University of Pikeville is no matter where you go, if there's a graduate, they tell you that. They say, I'm a graduate, I'm an alumni, I, I went to the University of Pikeville. And it really, to me, that speaks volumes about the amount of pride that folks feel about their educational experience here and how, how they feel when they leave, about the loyalty that they have back towards the university. So it's, if you, as an outsider kind of coming in, that's, a, that's an experience or an impression that's very strong that comes across in the community when you talk to people. And if you say, well, we're doing this University of Pikeville, well, I'm an alumni, I'm a graduate, you know, and they're very proud of their experience at the University of Pikeville. And I stopped to think about that in terms of how it relates to some of the work that we do with folks in recovery um, across, really across the country. And I was reminded of a, of a, of a young man that, that uh, I was running a treatment program at the time, and I got a phone call, and it was a local hospital. And they said, uh, we, have a, we have a young man here who just flatlined on alcohol poisoning. And they said, but he can't leave the hospital. He has to come to a treatment program. And I was talking, I trained the, the resident advisors uh, Wednesday, and we were talking a lot about you know, alcohol and the impacts of alcohol and so forth. And one of the things that, uh, that we did was with this young man, we, did, we went and got him at the hospital. And we brought him into our program. And he was so flat and he was so depressed he had such a hard time getting his, you know, sort of getting his momentum and his recovery and, and doing well. And we decided that, uh, this was in St. Petersburg, Florida, and we decided at the time that we were going to put him in a college class. And, and so we took him, <clears throat> we took him to uh, St. Petersburg, which was a junior college at the time. We took him to St. Peter's Junior College and we put him in a class. He'd never been to college. And he started learning and learning and it brought his talents out. He was a gifted writer. And he, and he did so well in school. And today, uh, Chuck's probably 20 years sober you know, and clean. And if you go back to a defining moment, he'll tell you in his recovery, it was when his identity shifted from being someone who had a, a substance abuse problem to a student. And when he started feeling like he was a student and he started feeling like he could learn and he started feeling like he could contribute, his recovery really took hold and he, he, he became a great, he's become a great success. He works in our field today and he's become a great, he's a great success. And so I think sometimes that, uh, you know, the, the university time when folks are with you, it's such a defining time in terms of their identity that'll carry with them for the rest of their life. And so making sure that they have a, a, a great experience here is, is what you all are committed to and, and we're just we're look, really looking forward to just being able to join you on that journey. So I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'm just glad to see so many folks and thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. And I'm glad to see all of y'all too. I am so excited about this partnership. This is just another way that we're going to ensure students have access to all the resources they need to be successful. The Office for Student Success exists because this institution, this administration, genuinely, this faculty, staff, genuinely cares about our students and their success. We are truly a family on this hill. As you can see, we all come together for these important things. And one person's success is all success. We are constantly looking at ways to improve the college experience for our students. And we have several programs in place already which help us form bonds with our students and know them as people and anticipate their needs and be able to address them both in the classroom and outside the classroom. Dr. Hurley and Governor Patton have always been supportive of implementing anything that we determine would benefit our students. For example, we have programs like Walmart Wednesday where we simply provide transportation so they can go and shop. And we have What's Up Wednesday where that's a, an opportunity for us to provide home cooked foods and encouragement and it's a platform for students to voice their opinions and, and be heard every Wednesday night at 830. We have a mentoring program where faculty and staff volunteer their time and expertise to be a personal guide at UPIC to our incoming freshmen, and all of that is free of charge, no strings attached. 
The Office for Student Success works as a liaison between the students and the rest of the campus, getting them to services provided by other offices. We work closely with just about everyone on campus, from tutoring to the ACE program, to academic advising, to the university nurse. And I want to take just a moment to recognize my right hand in student success. You all know her as Mandy, <laughs> Miss Amanda Stacy. She really puts the sunshine in all of our days here at UPOC, and no one can deny that God has truly given her a heart for our students and their success, and I'm thankful she's on my team. This partnership with WestCare is yet another way we can assist our students in navigating college life and give them opportunities for success and for internships. And it just opens a whole new avenue of services for our students, and I could not be more thrilled to work with this group of people and welcome them to our UPOC family. Over the next few weeks, we'll be developing um, how this partnership will work and how it will serve our students in the campus community, and you are invited to stay after the conclusion of the program to talk with these wonderful folks and ask questions, as Dick had said earlier. But as we wind down, I want to say how thankful I am for Mr. Gary Justice and for Dr. Hurley and for Governor Patton and for the faculty who really pay attention and keep their, they consistently listen to the pulse of our campus community and care. They really care about our students and about their success and make sure they have what they need. And I appreciate all of you all being here with us today to share in this day and this excitement as our family continues to grow and thrive. This is truly a great team to be on and it is a great day to be a bear. Um, at this time, I would like for Dr. Hurley to join me and with all of the um, people representing WestCare, join us up here as well. <laughs> we want to um, officially welcome them to the UPOC family so they can proudly display the orange and black with the lapel. All right. Sharon, you can replace your Pikeville College alumni pin with the U-Pike pin now. She had it on proudly in our first meeting, and I noticed. Is Dr. Freeman here? This light is very bright. It's our, Dr. Freeman, so here's the deal. You ask for one counselor in that scathing email. Uh, I called it poetic penmanship. Not only will we have one, we will have three full-time counselors this year based from Westgate. <laughs> and President's prerogative on every Monday morning from eight to nine, I'm penciled in for my human health counseling needs. So <laughs> that's, that's important. Thank you for being here, uh, Bill Baird. Thank you for what you do for not only the University of Pikeville, but for Westcare and this community. It will take all of us in this room as leaders, Jailer Rodney Scott, and we, like Dick alluded to, we could put our heads in the sand and say, well, we don't have issues at the University of Pikeville. We don't have concerns at the University of Pikeville. We have no need for human health counseling or alcohol counseling or drug counseling or suicide counseling when the fact of the matter is we absolutely need that those services every single one of us need services in some capacity and we wanted to partner with Westcare because they brought more than just one component they bring the experience and the depth across all, all facets and that's important and this is for faculty staff administration students, and then I think we will expand this program uh, next year, but we're gonna try to, uh, I don't like to walk, we'll, we'll, we'll walk and then run, but we're, we skipped the crawl phase here at the university. But we're excited, this is a great opportunity. We truly have an, an entity that cares about our region, the region of Appalachia, and cares about every single person in here, in particular our students, and that's what I care about. I know that's what all of you care about. 
We're open for questions. Uh, Dick can make up the answers. Sharon can validate, and we'll be in great shape. Thank you for coming. This is a wonderful day. And students, this is for you. God bless.